All righty, folks. Something I am super excited to announce, and I got to tell you, I wasn't sure this would ever happen. We are on the cusp of releasing into the wild something that will be called the Zuber Letter. Yes, folks, I'm a horrible writer, but I have had an interest in creating a weekly newsletter for years, and it's because of my great friendship and partnership with this young man right here, Lance Lambert, that we are going to take our passions and slam them together and create this Zuber Letter weekly, at least to start newsletter, Lance. I can't believe you said yes to this crazy idea. I can't believe that you're willing to kind of collaborate and mesh our two worlds together, uh, Resi Club and One Rental at a Time. I'm I'm above honored, and I can't wait to show the audience what's coming. Yeah, yeah, this is really exciting. And so if people want to go ahead and get on your list, they can just type in zuberletter.com, drop in their email, and they'll I love that. be on the list. Yeah, so and right now, it's again, it's, it's just coming. So again, just go to zuberletter.com. There is one field. Just put in your email, and then as soon as we both feel comfortable with what we've got, we will start the communication. So zuberletter.com. Yeah, and and so the thinking there with this is, you know, you've really built this great community, and you're helping a lot of people, you know, achieve financial freedom, and you make a lot of great content, like video content, and that's your video. strength. In the conference, my strength, yes, writing. And uh, my side is, I, I, your strengths are kind of like more of my weaknesses, and then my strengths are more on like you know, the writing and published content, you know, from my time at like Bloomberg and Fortune Magazine and sure. Chronicle Air Education. And so the goal here is to take some of your content that you already do and some of your best themes that you hit through the week yeah. and bring that into a newsletter form. And so my team over at Resi Club, we're just going to help on like the production yeah. side and the editing side, but the content and the thought and all of that, that is... Michael I, I, I have um, had a dream of finding someone who could take, even if we just took the daily financial news, which is five days a week, typically five topics. So let's call it, let's call it, you know, 30 topics a week. If we could pick off the two or three that are the most important, go in just a little bit more detail. Obviously I geek out about housing data, but you have this history and track record. Just think about how this meshes together to be better for everyone. And the other thing we can't forget is people consume differently. Mm -hmm. As you said, my strengths video, no editing, that that hits a certain set. But there's a lot of people that consume and learn by reading. And then there's people that learn by both. So I think the zuberletter.com is going to take off. I think it will only be accentuated because there's somebody that actually can write <laughs> helping me put it together, which is not not my strength, not easy. And then I we can't remiss your history, your data, your ability to slice and dice into what I call a buy box. No one else has that, right? Resi Club and what you have behind the scenes, your ability to take my crazy notion of a buy box down to a zip code. You slap that together. And we and we really have that's something. one thing that people don't know at times, which is sometimes you bring up a great point or like a theory on housing. And then sometimes I go get the data and I visualize it. Maybe you don't always get as much credit as you should uh, for some of that. Like, uh, sorry, uh, one in particular that comes to mind is the fact that your call and you were right, that there would be more softness and weakness at the top of the market as rates shot up and there would be more warmth at the bottom. And so I went out and got like data on like several hundred markets, spice it up. And lo and behold, not only was it true, it was almost true everywhere. Um, so th that's the type of stuff that we can do in the newsletter as well. Well, I'll give you another one. I'm just started to talk about, this is less than 48 hours old and I am petrified. This will prove true. And we will start to see it in the data over the next 30 to 60 days. If I am right again, and that is my concern, Lance is home buyers are on tilt. So what does that look like? What does that feel like? So for the last couple of years, as you know, home builder or home buyers have been frustrated. They've been they've been trying and they backed away. When rates hit eight percent, home buyers had permission not to shop. They re-signed leases. They did all these things. Now rates are down sub seven, still, perhaps on a trajectory down to six and a half. And do you know when six and a half feels good? When they're used to eight. Yeah. You add on top of that two years of trying. 
I fear, and I'm already hearing it onesie twosie, that buyers are on tilt. They're going to buy not the perfect property and they're going to waive conditions and they're going to overpay. So I think there's a couple of things that might transpire over the next 60 days in the data. That is uh, pendings it start to grow faster than inventory. It's not been that case the last four weeks. Inventory has been building. I think that might unwind. And then what we're going to really see, specifically below the median, is actual close price to list price will be 102, 103, 104. Mm -hmm. This, to me, is my... I'm petrified because I've been doing this a long time, and... If that happens, we could actually create a housing bubble. If we have enough home buyers on tilt that make bad financial decisions, a la 2006, bad financial decisions, we could have a housing bubble that pops in you know one, two, three years from now. So that's my fear. We'll see so if it happens. The, the great thing about the Zuber letter, and if people want to sign up again at zuberletter.com, put in your email, you'll be on the list is that this email, like when you have great calls like that or insights, if they don't watch all your videos, but like that's one of your big calls of the week, we pull it out, we put it in the newsletter and so people don't miss it. So like exactly. some of your best content, we highlight throughout the week. And then another thing is if you wanna reach people or tell people about you know the events you're gonna do or other things you got going on, it's a good place to do things mm -hmm. there. You could also highlight some of your audience, like some of their successes ah. and you know bring them in. And, you know, maybe even have like, you know, a, pi a picture of one of them or the home they just bought and, you know, a bit of advice from them, like to get more of your audience. And then I would love that. Love if we want to do like polls and surveys or joint polls and surveys with Resi Club, it's a great way to like get it directly to the audience. So I, 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 I'm I, still I shocked. I'm shocked yeah. you're willing to do this for us. It's awesome. Yeah. And I, so I think it just opens you up to create more great content and, you know, and get more out of what you're already yeah. making and create value for your audience. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that idea about highlighting the, the, you know, the community is, is a really big one for me because I get texts, I get Instagram posts, I get, I get pictures, right. Selfies of, of people doing amazing things. And I try to do my best to highlight them at the end of the daily financial news, but I would love another way. A la the newsletter, the the you know the 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 community member of the week or whatever we call that, um, that would be so cool just to thank the community in another way. Um, that would be that would be That's fun. The for interesting me. thing about you, Zuber, is that you know I've worked in media 10, 11, 12, I forget actually the number, but it's over ten years now, and I've been in a lot of publications. Your take on media and the way that you bring the audience in. And then, you know, highlight them and, you know, really just are looking out for them. And, uh, you know, and then also just your positivity. It's just so rare in media. And so yeah. I'm excited to, you know, pl play a little part in helping you to get bigger. Well, it, well, let's be very clear. I have wanted to do this for years. I, I have known that a newsletter is powerful. I have known that a newsletter... Uh, is a way to reach more people, help more people, but it is not my strength. I think about writing a newsletter and I physically want to crawl into a ball because writing is hard. I, it, it, it is, it is, I would rather squat 300 pounds than try to write a paragraph. I mean, it's, it's horribly difficult for me. And then I've known it's, and so I always have this tug of war in my head. So when we got together for the first time 18 months ago, when we kept talking, when you read my book and when you did all these things, I'm like, I really hope that someday Resi Club and One Rental at a Time, because it is, it's it's like yin and yang, right? I'm good video, ad hoc, you're good writing and data. If we could somehow smush that together and make it better for both of us and the community, I don't know how we lose, right? The Zuber letter is yeah. going to be amazing. And then also just your expertise, right? And single family rentals and all of that, like, uh, yeah, I think this is a really great partnership and I'm really excited to see the Zuber letter launched. And if they want to subscribe to your newsletter again, it's zuberletter.com. Just put in your email. If the first time you put it in, it like brings up a red box. Don't worry about it. Just put it in again and it'll eventually get submitted. 
Yeah, we're doing this real time. We're announcing this maybe a couple of days early, but I'm just too excited. I can't hold it back. I I pressed Lance to make sure we can announce it today. So again, if there's a if it's a little clunky the first time, give us a break. Um, I'm excited. I had to announce it. I had to get it off my chest. Uh, so the zuberletter.com. But I'd be remiss, Lance, if we didn't step into the data of the week. Uh, it is Thursday when we're recording this. We did get pending home sales. Pending home sales were up 1.6%, slightly above the 1.5 expected, and certainly above last month at negative 4.7. Uh, all I could say is rates matter. Rates matter. Yeah. So right now, uh, you know, the housing market is, you know, still fairly constrained on the existing market. Uh, rates have come down off of the eight, and I think that's helped to get, you know, some of those new listings out into the market. And we are going to see more new listings this year than last year. Uh, but it's still not a ton of new listings. It's still well below uh, yeah. pre-pandemic levels. And when you don't have those listings and the buyers that come with it, because it's buyers and sellers, uh, you know, you just have less of an existing home market. And so the thing to watch is just, you know, as new listings rise, does your market just immediately absorb them? Are you like- Absorption they, rate, exactly. They're, they're just, you know, yeah, new listings come in, but boom, they're just sucked up. Or are you some of the places like Southwest Florida where some of those new listings aren't being absorbed and so inventory is kind of rising a bit. Um, but I would say right now, it looks like maybe the lock-in effect has kind of peaked last year and getting we'll a see. little more new listings, but still fairly constrained market. And, you know, prices have been fairly resilient still. Um, yeah. So I, I don't, you know, it, it is a little bit of a boring market in a way in terms of like, hey, you know. Boring's like, okay, man. Yeah. Boring's okay. Yeah. Uh, just very gradual moves. Yeah. And I think the only way we get a sudden burst is a big move in rates. One oh, I totally two. agree. The other thing that was interesting that I put out there, I talked with an agent in Austin, Texas. Now, this may very well be a Florida and Texas thing. So I'm asking my audience for the rest of the country. Austin, Texas, as of yesterday, so what was yesterday, the 27th, they are significantly behind closings from the previous month. So again, why is that important? We saw that uh, existing home sales for the month of February blew everybody out of the water on expectations other than me. I got that one right again. Uh, came in at four, annualized 4.38. The experts were saying 3.95. I don't know what they were smoking, but whatever. Uh, I think that uh, March is going to surprise people at a downside. I actually think that February's 4.38 might be the high of the year. Um, what do you think of all that? Uh, possibly. So you look at uh, mortgage rate, the mortgage purchase apps. Yep. Uh, they got a little bit of a burst initially when rates went down. And mm -hmm. that's, of course, a leading indicator for seasonally adjusted existing home sales. Uh, the only other you know, counter to it is you are seeing more new listings. Mm -hmm. And if market absorbs them, we'll kind of see. Because yeah. at the end of the day, the mortgage purchase apps and existing home sales, they're not like perfect like they don't yeah, not a perfect correlation yeah they're, they're in they're in sync just not a hundred percent so it's tough to say but i think what's probably true is we're probably not in a place where it's going to dramatically move from this yeah. point too too far yeah. one way we're not going to five million we're not going not this year not going not to five this million year. this year not and then the last year rates are really low and so the the seasonally adjust because remember the existing home sale number that you get isn't mm -hmm. just for like February, right? Correct. It's February, but seasonally adjusted, so accounting for a yeah. seasonality. So at the end of the year, let's say rates were at five and a half percent. Ooh. Even if existing home sales in December were still lower than June, because right. the seasonality, but seasonally adjusted December, if it gets a burst, oh, you it would get a higher. Uh, Correct. Seasonally adjusted existing home sales. But right now, unless rates move dramatically, probably not. Yeah. The other two things I thought about housing this week, again, the zuberletter.com, just I had to get that off my chest, was new home sales. New home sales came out on Monday. Um, my hope is still that builders follow the Lennar model and go smaller. Uh, in your talks, are you hearing more and more CEOs talk about potentially building smaller homes, or is that just wishful thinking on my front? I think that's going to be it. Yeah. You look at the John Burns uh, research and consulting forecast and it's co going down a, a little bit each year in square footage size. And that's been the case now for mul multiple years. That was already a bit of the case going into the pandemic. 
uh, it, because what happened is we had essentially 40 years of just mm -hmm. a straight up shoot for square footage size. And then during the housing bust, the segment of the market that got hurt the hardest was actually that entry level part, right? Exactly. Yeah. They all went McMansion. They all went big. Yeah. So the builders kept going big. And so we have two uh, things happening at the same time, which is you're coming off that 40 year streak of getting bigger for homes. And so that was already rolling over because the, the bust effects pushed it even higher. Mm -hmm. And then the second is, which is something you talk about and predicted is that affordability getting so strained would give builders almost no choice but to go smaller affordability yeah. adjustment through smaller homes, which then buyers, because affordability is so strained, they don't decide I'm not going to have a home at all. They say, I'm going to lower my expectations. Exactly. So exactly. The two together are working to uh, bring down the build size. And then the other part is, and I got this from a developer, is that some of the developers like it because they want to get as many homes and pot. And so there is huh. uh, the the math kind of works in the landowner's favor where it's absolutely helps value if depending on how you cut the lots. Yeah. And then the last thing that really happened this week is we got another case Schiller reading on home prices. And dare I say the crash bros and boomers are still wrong. They did not crash. U.S. home prices, uh, single family, so Case Shiller single family, are up 6% year over year. Uh, we were down 0.1 month over month without adjustment. Seasonally adjusted, though, it's up. Mm -hmm. And then uh, since uh, March 2020, we're up 45% for single family homes. That's and ridiculous. We're 0.7, just about 1% above the 2022 peak. And so if you look at the past uh, like 20, I forget how many months it was. I tweeted this out the other day. Maybe it was like the past 21 months, mm -hmm. something like that. U.S. home prices are essentially up 1%. But if you go back the the 30 or the, the previous 21 month period, it was like 33%. Yeah. So what happened is we went from huge boom to, you know, a bit of sideways movement. And the 6% up year over year is essentially making up for just some of those brief declines at the end of 2022. So I think the big question here is, um, I do think uh, year over year is now going to roll over if you look sure. at the 14 data. So it's yeah. going to continue to be up, but up less. And the reason it's up so much is because you kind of, you got yeah. that bounce off of that January low in uh, 2023. So it'll be interesting to see where it goes. Does it go... All the way down to two percent. Does it go to four percent? So we're I've still said for a long time that uh, we had a decade of appreciation in two years. And that means the next eight years are going to be basically sideways, and uh, that's kind of where we are. Yeah, and and so it was really unhealthy in two years, the first two oh, years yeah. of the decade, to be up forty five percent, forty four percent. Now normal. we're now we're four years into the decade and we're up forty five percent. So it, in a way, that's actually a bit of a healthy improvement. Uh, yeah, you know, I exactly. I looked at these numbers over the weekend, which was showing that the U.S. housing market uh, is less frothy today than it was two years ago. Still frothy by historical yeah. standards. Uh, but, but that's what happens when time goes by. Is it just as wages grow, as things are flat, as rates come down a little, we just naturally slowly grind, and, and grind is the right word, Grind exactly. to better affordability. And, and that's the whole thing, which is if you can keep appreciation down and incomes can rise, and, and really a key here to make it sustainable long term is to make sure home building doesn't fall off. Exactly. Then the gains can be short term. But Agreed. if you do all that, you can grind to better affordability and better fundamentals without necessarily a historic crash in prices. Oh, and this a is crash is not coming. Many cycles. This yeah. Um, and the other thing to, on home builders, let's just put good word, good karma out there. If home builders do the reverse of pulling back and they actually step on the gas and go smaller, that actually helps provide more product for the low end. And and it just it is the right answer. I hope I hope developers see that that is a way that they can produce more units, maybe at a lower profit per unit, but they can produce more units since they make more money. That's the math that I hope these CEOs are doing. Yeah. 
Exactly. And, you know, even some of the markets that have given up on prices like Austin, which Austin is very unique because they had a lot of California money rush in exactly. very quickly, uh, especially alongside like all the Elon hype and just, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get out of the Bay Area. A lot of money rushed into Austin very quickly during the pandemic. Prices went up so high. They were just stretched beyond local fundamentals. But the thing that Austin had that these other markets don't is they had a lot of supply on the single family they side. They did, and they so did. as that came into the market, uh, that put downward pressure on the existing prices and they had a bit of a correction. Uh, but then some of these other markets, you know, who haven't had as much of that, you know, Vegas has building, but maybe not to lot Austin. No, not awesome yeah. and uh you know they haven't had as much give up um yeah just, it, it really at the end of the day housing is supply and demand it is it is and if you really step back and you bifurcate it by above and below the median for your area it really starts to open up what's happening today first time home buyer entry level stuff is on fire especially if it qualifies fha meaning it's clean luxury stuff the farther you get away from that just softer it just is. You can look at days on market. You can look at number of inventory. You can look at actual the list price. It's just, it is. And uh, if you have the ability to look at your buy box, your zip code because of Resi Club, all the better. Where could they get uh, Resi Club? Yeah. If you want to uh, sign up for Resi Club's newsletter, just type in resicluballytics.com. You can get signed up, just drop in your email. And then also, if you follow me on Twitter at News Lambert, I drop some of my best stuff there too. And again, if you want to be part of something that is super exciting that I had to get off my chest, go to zooperletter.com. There's one box, put in your email. This will be a weekly communication combination partnership between Resi Club and One Rental at a Time that I never knew would happen, but I hoped it would. And it's almost here. So be a part of it. Thanks, bud. Take care. Thank you.